Hi beauties, welcome back to my channel. This channel is all about Hyaluron Pin Pro. So if you're interested in having the treatment done, interested in doing the treatment, finding out more, you're at the right place. <laughs> Okay, so I know that I promised to move on from lips and send you videos on chins, cheeks, um, I've had a few other requests, but I have so many requests on a daily basis regarding lip techniques that work, devices that work, and different serums that work, that I decided to do one last video <laughs> just to show you um, that there are different techniques that you can use, or there is more than one technique that you can use to successfully do the treatment. There there is more than one device that you can use successfully as well as different filler serums so it's not a, a one size fits all but it is also not uh, necessarily um, that you have to get this device otherwise it will not be working so I hope that you enjoy this and please like and subscribe share comments I really do appreciate any feedback okay so these are the pens that I have and that I use um, this is by far my favorite pen it is the 0.5 mil premier pen um, this is a 0.3 mil gold and black pen very very similar to the um, premier one and then this is just another one that I recently got um, because so many of you need to know which pens to buy and unless you're in South Africa unfortunately I can't give you this one because exporting is a bit of a mission for us so uh, the alternative would be to buy black and gold from a reputable supplier uh, and I'm also enjoying this little 0.3 mil today so today I'm actually going to be using this one just to demonstrate that it works just as well as a 0.5 mil Premier pen because unfortunately, as I've mentioned, it is very difficult for you to get this if you're not in South Africa. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to use a Young Lights B Plus on Michelle's lips today. I'm going to use my 0.3 mil pen because I'm quite how I've just explained. Uh, then we're also going to use a multi serum for the red cheeks as well. So uh, let's, leave, let's pull up the time here. We're going to start on Michelle's lips now. I'm doing a top up today, so I'm not going to be using a full one mil. I don't think that it's necessary. We're probably going to use 0 0.6 or 0.9 mils, and then we can keep the next whatever's left for maybe a third top up if it's needed that last 0 0.3 mils or so. Okay, so with my lips, it's going to be shots of 0 0.02. I'm going to just have a little gauze and a tissue on standby. Now you can come and have a look at what I'm doing. So we'll start at that area. She should be nice and numb because I did numb her. I like to numb on my lip lines. Okay, if I squeeze the lip, then I can always see if there are any blood vessels or little capillaries that I want to avoid, but there are not any here. So we can start with our first shot. How did that feel? Oh. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So if you can come as close as possible, Helisha. So there's um there's a little bit of residue of serum, but not it's maybe like a five percent of the serum that I just injected. So it's very, very little product wastage. Um, obviously with lips, it's very important to stay out of that um, wet membrane because that is where you'll get enormous bruising and swelling. Um, so both top and bottom lip, we stay on the dry area. Um, in this, For this client, I'm going to do the majority of the shots in the inside of the lip, doing only a few on the vermilion for contouring. Obviously, your contouring pushes the lip up a little bit, and your volume shots create more of a pout effect. I'm pushing so hard that the area is going a little bit wide. That's how much pressure I'm using. Okay. 
I'm gonna do a shot just above that one. One, two, three. seconds, do my massage movements before I lift off the skin. Keep the head of the ampule as well as her lips dry. used to show you to pocket the lip from the side and I do still enjoy to do that but I wanted to show you that you don't have to pocket this way you can also pocket this way so as long as you are pocketing and you are creating a nice firm surface for you to work on you should be getting your product in if you get zero papillary response throughout your whole treatment then that is a sign to show that you might not be getting your product in. One, two, three. My client does have a little bit of scar tissue on her vermilion from cold sores. Um, so I do expect to have slightly more product loss with her. just more than halfway so I'm going to do one more shot here then I'm going to move on to the other side One little shot on Cupid's bar. It's sometimes very difficult to get this area nice and pocketed because there's only so much space between the nose and her lip. So you can always make a little mark with a surgical marker to show yourself where exactly her Cupid's bow peak is. I can see it luckily, so I'm going to one, two, three. Okay, okay now we're going to go on to the other side. We have 10, on 0 0.10 moles. That is five shots. I like doing lips with my clients sitting up, but I'm making her cheeks as well, which is why I've just slid her down. 
it's also nice to show you how um, it, it doesn't matter, it's just personal preference. You can decide what's more comfortable for you. and a half more shots left and we'll refill for the last time. I push too hard where I've just worked I will be pushing my hyaluronic acid out because the tissue integration hasn't taken place yet and therefore the product is not not stabilized inside the skin yet. two days after their appointment. Okay, so I've decanted it into my kidney bowl. I'm just pumping it out with my gloves. And then I am massaging. So if I can feel any lumps or bumps, then that will be um, specifically where I want to apply uh, a little bit of pressure. I don't recommend ice, any extreme heat or cold, any extreme temperature on these lips immediately after because um, the uh, hyaluron pen leaves the product very superficially and even then icing it, I sometimes feel like that could contribute towards lumps and bumps. So that is just my personal take. I rely fully on this Arnica to reduce the swelling and bruising and it does work very effectively uh, for my clients. Mapping for our cheeks is just to show us where to apply our shots and to make sure that there's symmetry on either sides. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this white pencil and I'm just going to join the corners of her mouth with the corners, of the outer corner of her eye, so the lateral corners. And then I'm going to also join the corner of the lips to the upper tarragus. And then I'm also going to join the corner of the eye to the to the upper tarragus so you can see that this forms a triangle. And then I'm going to do one more line from the corner of the nose to the upper tarragus. And on this line, I will I'll be able to line up some shots. I won't necessarily cover the whole area. Um, also, if you can maybe see on her, she's got a little bit of underlining inflammation. She's got a little bit of capillaries around there, which is also a reason for me to rather stay, let's say, a centimeter out of that area and rather focus on this section. And I'll do this exact same mapping on the other side when I get there because that will make sure that I've got symmetry. I'm going to uh, use shots of 0.01 mole. This is a fine serum that I'm going to be using on her cheek area. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stretching the skin. I'm going to be putting the ampule down quite hard, hard enough to leave an indentation because then I can see where I'm working and where to put the next shot. So I've got it nice and stretched and firm. One, two, three. Put that 
on the show? Nothing. Is it okay? okay. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so there I can see where my indentation is. I'm going to just wipe it slightly. And I'm going to do the next shot just next to that. You can overlap if you're looking for a lot of volume. Um, but we just want to give a little bit of a lift to the cheek area to pull that section up just a tiny bit. So right next to my previous shot. Again, good stretch. Obviously this backing will be slightly different depending on the client's uh, facial features. If it is closer to the inner corner of the eye, you are a little bit more inclined to have bruising. Um, so you can just make your clients aware of that. I don't personally feel like it's necessary to numb the for, for 11's lines, frowns line, frown lines, cheeks or chin. Um, I don't feel like that's necessary to, to numb or even navel lobial lines, but you and your client can decide what's more comfortable and obviously depending on the regulations in your country. Time, so as I wiped away quite quickly, here and there it's very minimal which is good her lips are also minimal one two three it is a good idea to ask your client to do a light, light exfoliation a day or two prior to having this appointment to remove any excess layers in the stratum corneum which would make this hard to penetrate um, and you can also do a very very basic cleanse um, light uh, I don't want to call it a peel because it's not really a peel, but a light exfoliation, maybe even a warm compress to help open the pores prior to doing this treatment as well. That'll also help your penetration. Come to me. <laughs> Let me just gonna show you. So on this slide you can see that there are some superficial capillaries. If I were to do a shot there, I would most definitely have bruising and swelling. Um, so I'm going to avoid that section as well. It was exactly the same on the other side, so um, I just well, actually, it was. It's here. It's about one and a half centimeters to two centimeters. On that side, it was about one centimeter. So I will only be working in that section or on this line. I will not be working on that little piece because it will cause bruising and swelling. If it falls on an area that you really do want to work on, try and avoid it by about, I'd say, five millimeters. Okay. So again, for cheeks, my shots are 0 0.01 mil. I stretch the skin. I put it down very firmly. One, two, three. Wait a few seconds. Do the massage movement. Okay, so now I'm just going to massage this area a little bit with uh, a little bit of arnica oil on here. I'm just going back and forth to make sure that there are no bumps. I used a fine serum and I used um, 0.01 shots. I also only did one row of shots, so the chances of lumps and bumps are tiny. But you can keep in mind the the thicker your serum, the thicker, the bigger your shots, the bigger the chance of lumps and bumps, and the more important the massaging step is. Can I take it to the other side? Thank you. 